Welcome to a new edition of Harness Central. I'm Harold Howe, and we're here with Dustin Jones to talk about wheeling and dealing. Dustin, you've got one qualifier on your belt now, under your belt now. Um, I guess, how do you feel about the horse in general in the uh, as we're approaching mid-June? Well, I think he's right where we want him to be. He, uh, we trained him off the gate last week in 57, and uh, his qualifier was good today. So we're looking to go one or two more qualifiers, but right now he's just doing everything that we want him to be. Dustin, for the benefit of people who have not been up close to the horse, if you didn't train him and you, you, he was in somebody else's barn, heaven forbid, but if he was and they brought him out of the stall, what would you see as a seasoned horseman? when you look at him? Well, he's uh, probably takes after more the American winner line, the credit winner and that. He's like a tall horse and uh, he's, this year he's like filled out a bit more than last year, but he's more of a feminine type of a horse there. Like not a big rugged, like you would think of a trotter. Like prestidigitator, he's not like him at uh, all. Not at all, he's more, more, more of an athletic type of horse. So he probably gets that from the credit winner side. When you sit behind him and you've got him in full gear, what feeling do you get? Well, he's uh, really nice to sit behind. I mean, like, after you drive him and you get on some of the other ones, you you want to make sure you finish your day up with wheeling because uh, you're always in a good mood after you jog him. Right. Obviously, the Hamiltonian is, is in your sights, but in a bigger picture, what are you realistically hoping for, given that you've got a horse, he's got a perfect record, undefeated, a two-year-old? I mean, what expectations do you have? Well, we're aiming at the Hambo. That was what we had discussed with our with our team, and uh, we hope he, we have him good for the Hambo. And then after that, he's got a full plate with the Colonial and the uh, Zwig and uh, Kentucky Futurity, Canadian Classic, and Breeders' Crown. So we're just hoping that he does good. And I I know it's going to be hard for him to go undefeated, but we're just hoping he has a good year and uh, you know he makes makes himself look good and everybody else look good, and maybe get some offers for a stallion career after. Obviously last year he was the best being undefeated. How do you view the overall crop? I mean, you've hardly seen anybody come back yet like yourself, but what, what sense do you have as a group of horses? Well, uh, as a group, the, a lot of the horses that he raced with are just starting back. And there's a couple new ones out there like that smiling Eli that he's winning 152 at the Meadowlands. And then there's Jurgen Hanover that's undefeated this year that win the uh, Empire State Classic. So it, it's actually a bit like last year. Every time like a new horse would come in from the U.S. That, to, to race with him, uh, like Royalty for Life or yeah, a perfect Yankee, we didn't know if he could beat him or not, but he always stepped up. So there's a couple other horses that look real good this year, and we're hoping that you know when it's time to play that he'll find a way to get it done. He always showed there was fight in the dog, which is something you know a lot of you horsemen talk about you get horses beautiful gait you, you know just lovely to sit behind but when they get in heat of battle they're sort of looking for their mother and he hasn't been like that no actually uh, his elimination of the breeder's crown last year he hadn't raced for five weeks and royalty for life was coming in off winning in uh, at lexington in 54 and uh you know like he got up to his saddle pad coming into the stretch and I, well, I was watching it on TV and I said, oh no, he's going to get beat. It looked like he was going by and uh, all of a sudden he just dug in and he stayed like uh, half a length ahead and he'd, he'd come back that night 27 and change and uh, after not racing for five weeks. So he always finds a way to get it done. All right. Let's talk about Presti Digitator, stable mate. What's his status these days? Well. He's had a few issues coming back. His knees bother him. He's got a splint that uh, we chiroed, and it's been bugging him a little bit, even after we chiroed it. So uh, we shocked it, and uh, we trained him yesterday in 210 at Mohawk, and you know we're just going week by week with him. So uh, he's been struggling a little bit to get back, but uh, he's had he had a lot of tough races last year. He had raced 17 times and showed up for every race and won his last start. But, uh, you know, like it took his toll on him. And uh, in the next month or so, we'll know, uh, you know, if he's going to race or we're going to have to give him some more time off. Right. And finally, your two-year-olds. All winter long, you've been optimistic, generally speaking, about your group. As we hit uh, mid-June, still feeling the same way? Yeah, uh, we're starting to separate a few now. But uh, 
we uh, we're going to train them at the end of this week. The Pacers in 210, and the Trotters around 13. And uh, then next week we're going to start going over to Mohawk with them, and probably by the mid July we'll have most of them in to qualify. But you know we got a few that we like. We got a Sun Beach filly and uh, a couple Trotton fillies, uh, a Chocolatier filly, and a Donato filly. The, a couple Dewey Cheatham and Howe Colts, and uh, a Broadway Hall Colt, and uh, you know a couple Pacing Colts. But you know the next month is when they're going to separate too. All right, good stuff. Well, good luck with everybody, and thanks for sharing your thoughts. Sure, Harold. My pleasure. Harold Howe with Dustin Jones giving you the Harness Racing Edge.